In terms of freshwater fish, you'll find everything from largemouth bass to carp in Wareham's many ponds, rivers, and streams. But most people are surprised to learn that the town also harbors a population of rare sea-run brook trout. These so-called salter brook trout have inhabited tiny red brook, part of the trustees of Reservations Lyman Reserve, since the glaciers retreated from New England some 12,000 years ago. The brook flows into Buttermilk Bay on the town's eastern border, and the trout that live here spend their winters in salt water before returning to freshwater for the spring, summer, and fall. To biologists like Steve Hurley of the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, the salters of Red Brook are both precious and fascinating. Each June, he and teams of volunteers set out to monitor the trout population. The process involves electrofishing with a large battery pack attached to a metal wand. The device issues bursts of electricity through the surrounding water, temporarily stunning the trout and other fish, which are then scooped up in nets and transferred to coolers. So one of the most things that's unique about Red Brook is it's actually protected now in public ownership all the way from the headwaters at White Island Pond down to the tidal area of Buttermilk Bay. And that's rare for an entire stream to be protected uh, in the public. And the reason for that is a man named Theodore Lyman who discovered this place back in 1867. He was the first fisheries commissioner, uh, started in 1866. He came down here, met Samuel Tisdale, the man that introduced black bass, largemouth and smallmouth bass to Massachusetts. He discovered this brook and he started buying the property back in 1869. His family protected Red Brook for generations and that's the reason why we're here today is the protection of the land surrounding this brook. Uh, and what's unique about Red Brook and which attracted Theodore Lyman here is the sea run brook trout. These are brook trout that actually go down into the salt water and grow to a much larger size than our native brook trout. Uh, and these fish have been protected for years. There was some stocking of both brown trout and brook trout over the years here, but we believe this is the original native strain of fish in this river. Well, one of the things that's unique about this is we've got so much public involvement in it. We've got other people interested in the story because it's such a great story of the Lyman family protecting this. And we've been able to attract other researchers. We've had acoustic tags implanted in the trout. A graduate student named Aaron Snook came in here and implanted um, the brook trout with sonic tags, which give out a beep. And she was able to follow them down into Buttermilk Bay, out into the full strength seawater. And we've also had a tagging project here since 2008. And we've noticed fish going down into that tide area and coming back and growing as much as four inches over the winter. This fishery is doing pretty well. Um, it is all catch and release now. When it was transferred from the Lyman family, which protected it under private ownership, uh, we enacted catch and release regulations. So it's catch and release, artificial lures only, the entire length of the stream. And we've been monitoring the population for many years now, and it goes up and down over the years, but in general, it's a very healthy population here. Um. What's exciting about Redbrook is there's nothing like this in New England, nothing at all. This is a crown jewel of sea run brook trout and a crown jewel of sea run brook trout restoration. You might see sea run brookies in other systems. There's actually quite a few in Maine uh, where I'm at these days. Um, but Redbrook is the, the crown jewel and our mission is to take what we've learned here pit tagging, habitat restoration, a number of other scientific um, procedures, and apply them to other systems in the area so that they can have the possibility, in fact, a probably a pretty good possibility of enhancing their sea run brook trout population. Um, Red Brook is one of a number of restorations that we have here on Cape Cod. Uh, I would recommend that if you want to catch sea run brook trout, that you fish the Quashnet, that you fish uh, Red Brook, and you fish the Mashpee, you fish the Kunamasset, and the Childs. And those, those five rivers basically illustrate a century of restoration. Uh, the Mashpee has not been restored, certainly not since anybody remembers. There's no record of rest any restoration, there's been no dam removals, there's been nothing. It's a natural reference stream. It's, it's magical. 
It's beautifully canopied in, the water is very cold, the fish are very common, it's a, it's a great place to catch brook trout. But that's what a brook trout stream is supposed to look like on Cape Cod. And then if you go from there to the quash net and see what almost 30 years of restoration has been like, good, good illustration of habitat restoration there. Then you come here, it's basically 20 years of restoration. So that's a two different uh, types of restoration, two different qualities. We don't have enough um, canopy here, so they're working, hopefully the trustees is working, putting some canopy here so there's more shade to keep the, the water cool and to keep the brook trout protected. Both the Childs and the Kunameset have been repopulated from fish out of the mash pea, um, but those, those populations, we just heard it from Steve today, those populations are doing quite well. So that's another thing we learned here is that you can translocate fish. If you've got a good population and a good habitat, and you know what you're doing, this is what's known as the nearest neighbor theory. You can move fish from one system to another. Uh, the trout you find in this river are average size. An average size fish is maybe five, six inches. You'll get a bigger one, an eight or a 10 every now and then. There are larger fish in here. We see from electroshocking almost every year a large fish. We didn't see one this year, they might be seeing one up there now, but uh, one year we saw a 16 inch fish that we knew spent the entire winter down in the salt water. We also know that that fish grew about four inches in that season, which is an extraordinary rate of growth. So why is that fish so big and why is it growing so fast? It knows there's a rich source of fish down in the estuary. So it goes down into the estuary and gets that, comes back up here to spawn. And today, what we're doing is we're manufacturing fish. We're, by, by creating habitat that was not habitat, we're providing more room for more fish to grow. So we're growing more fish. But I also like to say that uh, some of my work, in addition to growing fish, is to grow fisheries biologists that I like to have, like we had today, I like to have a bunch of young people here, let them just go crazy. That's kind of how I learned. You never know who's gonna grow up and decide to come back and work here.